Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is Java Beans. So we have been creating Java classes and creating objects of those Java classes to work and manipulate, transfer data, call methods, create properties, etc. And Java Beans just use that as the groundwork to create a specification. First of all, let's understand that Java Beans is just a standard. It is just a specification which has been provided by, by Java to be followed while you are implementing production grade or enterprise grade applications. So it's just a pure specification set of standards. If you want to read more about this, please go to this particular link which is written here. I mean, if you just Google Java Beans spec Oracle, then you will be able to find this particular link. You will see a download option here. If you go here, you will get these two specification documents option. So you can just accept the license agreement and click on this particular Beans 01101 PDF and you can read about the whole Java Beans specification. I've already downloaded this particular PDF which is opened in this tab. And if you go to the TOC here, it's an official Sun Microsystem white paper basically. And if you read about this, this, this is going to explain the whole Java Beans API specifications. It's going to specify the core components of the Java Beans component architecture. So it's a specification. Let's understand that very well. If you go to the table of contents, let's go to the interesting one, which says what is exactly a bean or a Java Bean. So a Java Bean is basically a reusable software component that can be manipulated in any visual IDE like Eclipse or IntelliJ or NetBeans etc. So technically a Java Bean is just a Java class but that Java class should follow three main properties. The first property is that that Java class should have getters and setters to access the properties. Second property is that that Java class should have a public no argument constructor so that anybody can create an object of it. And third is that the Java class should implement serializable. The reason Java being specified these three conditions, which I said, so let's talk about the third one where we are talking, we are saying that it should be implementing serializable interface. Why is that? It's because a Java bean would be required to be exported between applications, may be required to be written to a database or to a file system or to be converted into an XML or a JSON document sent over the network again being deserialized. So this will be moving across a lot because that's what we mean by reusable. Multiple different software components and applications might be reusing that bean again and again and that bean needs to travel across. And to enable that, that bean has to be serializable because if you can't serialize it, you just cannot transport that object to another application. It's just not possible. This is how Java has been. So that's why you need to implement serializable. You need to have a public no argument constructor and you need to have getters and setters to access your properties. You can actually read more about this if you scroll down. It will also talk about the difference between beans and class libraries. Remember not class, but class libraries. And here it explains what I just said that a Java bean can have properties. It can have events and it can have methods. So properties are nothing but the normal attributes which you create inside a Java class. Nothing fancy. The same attributes are named as properties. For example, you may have a far foreground property and then you can have a method which is just a normal Java method which can be called from other applications or from an environment. And by default, all of the beans public methods will be exported. By exported, I meant when you export this, when you serialize and export this object, all the beans public methods will be exported by default. But then a bean can choose to export only a subset of its methods if, they, if it wants to. A bean can also have events and events basically provide a way for one object to notify other objects that something has happened. So something similar to the uh, to the producer consumer example or the producer consumer pattern where uh, you can notify other objects. Threads also have this particular pattern where a thread can notify other threads that it has completed its task and other threads can start. So uh, so this is so that's the property behind event where something has occurred and then the object can tell other objects that that, it, uh, that something has occurred so that they can react to that particular event. So these are the three main uh, uh, traits which are properties, events and methods. Uh, you can read more about this particular white paper. I will not go into the details because it's a long white paper, but it's a very well written white paper, which will give you a very good understanding.
understanding of how Java Bean specification was written, what was the thought process behind it. So coming back to the code, if you want to just write it, it can be very simple to write. Just write any class and say implements serializable. So it will ask you to provide a serial version UUID. So you can write this here. Then you can create your attributes as normal private attributes. You can create public methods to access and manipulate these attributes in the forms of getters and setters. So these are the public methods to, to access and manipulate these attributes. Here we have a parameterized constructor which will not be required or which should not be there when you're creating a Java bean. It should just be like this because when we talk about the public no args constructor, as we discussed in the very first lectures that uh, you do not need to provide the default constructor. Java will automatically provide a default constructor for every class. So you don't need to write something like this. It's just not needed because uh, you can write it, but it has no value attached. It has no meaning because this is something exact. This kind of uh, code is already generated by Java compiler when it compiles this particular class. So a public default no argument constructor implementing serializable private properties and public methods and you can have additional event methods as well which i talked about just when we were going through the white paper and that's all pretty much what a java bean is so you can see it's it's just a java class but some additional uh, uh, specifications which a java class has to follow to be called as a java bean and that's all i want to cover in this particular session it was just a very quick conceptual walkthrough of what we mean by java bean and in the next session i'm going to introduce the spring framework to you and if you like this particular video a thumbs up would be massively appreciated and please don't forget to subscribe to simply code for more programming related videos thank you and we'll meet again in the next session